Hi, what's up? So, once upon a time, there was a country named China, and uh, like every country, they had a, they had a segment of people that like to uh, go to nature and get healthy. Every country has uh, has uh, something like this. What, what, what people don't know about ninjutsu, you know, the ninjas, the 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 movies of the the Japanese guys who dress all in black with the swords. So the ninjas, um, apparently, they were actually like uh, like yogis. They were they were they were uh, like very high level people doing meditation in nature, and then uh, the government apparently wanted to kick them all out of this mountain they used to practice on and uh, it's kind of a funny story instead instead of uh, like you know peacefully going like you might think a yogi would do they uh, they they turned all their yoga into into really high level sort of spiritual energetic martial arts and uh, and they fought the government off and and kept their mountain that was one. Uh, that was one account I read. The ninjas are really fascinating. There's um, there's three Orthodox Jews that are very, very, very high-level ninjas. And I know one of them, and a couple others are on my on my radar to meet. And uh, so this is all tied into the same thing. The uh, In China, we had the Taoists. The Taoists were, you know, the Chinese version of this. And it's the same thing. If, if you read this great book called uh, the, the Wandering Taoist by uh, Dang Meng Dao, same thing. They were, they were these, these high-level Chinese yogis in the mountains uh, meditating, and then uh, Japan attacked China back in maybe the 30s or the turn of the century, someone knows. Just please, when I, when I put a question like this and you know it, just please post the answer. So, uh, so Japan attacked uh, China um, sometime back then, and then some of these some of these yogis went into war. They 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 turned their uh, they turned their Chinese yoga into into very high level martial arts, and they helped fight the Japanese. It's in this uh, it's in this book. Yeah, in terms of the Chinese Taoist thing, that's one of the greatest books written on it. Um, the wandering Taoist, but like I always, like I always like to stress, this stuff is, uh, it's niche kosher, meaning uh, the founders of all these different systems in general, they weren't, they weren't, uh, they weren't necessarily down with the, the Torah, worshiping one God. Uh, uh, apparently what happens in a lot of these systems is people learn how to worship uh, lower angels. That's what we think in, in, in Hinduism you have all these mantras, all these names of different gods, you know, Ganesha, blah blah blah. And uh, a lot of us think it's probably the names of angels some way in Kabbalah they talk about binding an angel. Means you can somehow get some kind of angelic force to do what you want by saying its name, and uh, you know, for an American, it sounds great. It's the genie in a bottle. You can, you can, uh, you know, save time, save, save, save a commute, telecommute, psychically commute. But uh, the kind, of, the kind of baggage that comes with this stuff is is more than you can imagine. I can, I can, uh, I can tell you a lot more personal stories than you probably want to hear. Actually, a lot of people have been bugging to hear them. It's just, uh... There's probably some post purim fireworks there. It's just, I don't know how much I want to get into these stories. There's an Indian not to talk too much about your past and to more work on the future. So, um... So you might think it's great to say a mantra, say say these holy mantras from, from Buddhism or Hinduism and you get certain powers. And uh, at the at the time of my coming back to Torah, I uh, I was doing these mantras four or five hours a day. I had a whole practice in Buddhism, a whole practice in Hinduism. I'd combine them. I'd go back and forth. I do them with hip hop. I was I was getting it's called it's called mantra yoga, right? I was getting a lot of skill 
that would come with uh, saying certain sounds that are the names of some kind of angelic force probably for lack of better words I mean when we say that what does that mean it's a whole huge question angels demons is it is it a metaphor are they real whatever like <laughs> the real answer is whatever the Ram bomb says that it's all a charlatan kind of thing the Ron bond says that it's real it's a, it's a big sugya it's a big study but for our intents and purposes I want to help uh, un unhitch everyone connected to me from um, other religions for the most part why it's just easier you know there, there, there might be a way of tiptoeing around for a non-jew to do another religion Rav Yitzhak Ginsburg he seems to say no he seems to uh, there's he has a book uh, Kabbalah for the nations really great book on uh, all about Torah for people that aren't Jewish and he seems to say um, no they can't do other religions at all Menachem Kalish seems to say yes in a lot of cases it's all over my head but but when in doubt simplify so so uh, you know if you want to come with me the easy way just drop your drop your religion take all your uh, take all your statues of the different avodas are you have in your house you know the Buddha and the the Krishna and all these statues and and put them in a trash bag and put in the dumpster and then give me a call um, you know, Mechila, forgiveness for people I'm offending with this. Like I said, there might be a way of doing all this if you're not Jewish that's uh, kosher. So that comes back to the question, why do you have to care? If you're not Jewish, why do you care what the rabbis say about what you're doing, right? For, for, for many thousands of years of history, no one who's not Jewish has cared what the rabbis say about their life. But... Now that we Jews aren't completely under the gun 100% of the time, this tradition is, is coming to life. It's always been there. Um, I really like to learn these, these laws with people. The, the, the laws of the, the B'nai Noach, the children of Noah, the, the laws of Torah for non-Jews. So if you want to learn the laws, uh, give me a call. Give me your Skype. Hit me up. It's, it's a big... Uh, very enjoyable for me because for certain people it's completely new territory I was talking to someone last week in um, a very kind of far off part of America and uh, she had no encounter with this ever it's very exciting to me to share it and then uh, you know she didn't want to follow up conceivably because it just seems so far out you know if you lived in the time of Galileo and you were the first person in your community to talk to Galileo about the earth being round, you might feel like, geez, I don't want to get into this, you know? Everyone says the earth's flat. That's how it works. If, if, if you go to the end of the earth, you fall off. And uh, it just, you know, it might seem easier for you to kind of ignore the whole thing. There's uh, many, many people do this with me in their life I, I, I'm bringing a lot of cutting edges from all different fields and so a lot of people feel like it's easier just to cut me out and uh, I can definitely appreciate the the impulse but I'm telling you so many of these people over the years they come back you know with their tail between their legs and they say okay this happened that happened I realized I can't worship the devil or I realized I really need to get healthy and stop worshiping the doctors, etc., etc. Yeah, a lot of stories. Eight million stories in the naked city. What's that funny phrase? Anyhow, um, so um, these traditions are so incredibly wonderful ninjutsu buddhism taoism which is why i'm so fanatic about 
having a new a new uh, version of the system. By the way, one of the big names in ninjutsu, uh, who I'm spacing out right now, Bussy, Robert Bussy. He was uh, he studied in uh, Japan with the world master. His name is Hatsumi. And uh, from my research, for sure, the ninjutsu thing is is uh, you know basically, according to Torah law, at root, completely unkosher. For instance, they do one thing in ninjutsu where they they uh, they light a bunch of candles and they, and they and they you know the grand master meditates on bringing together the power of all the ninjas in the world into one force. I mean, oh look, how can how can I say it's not kosher? I haven't I haven't run that ritual by the by the poskim, by the the people that make the Jewish law. In general, with all these deeper questions, don't don't care what I say. Find the biggest Jewish lawmaker in your community and ask them yourself. Jew Jewish law is completely case specific for your situation and your time period and your location. It's very cool like that. It's a, it's a, it's a flex, flex, flexible law. It's a, it's a living law. Speaking of which, I put up um, I put up a video from Rob Shulchit about the Noahide movement. That is hands down the, the, the best video I've seen about the Noahide movement. It's up on my wall. Emmanuel Shulchit. He is brilliant beyond belief and he <laughs> in that video what he says is so completely definitive it's like that's the final word I showed it to one very um, you know one person who's very into kind of new age and cutting edge cutting edge and they said oh he's so old school you know it was, it was absurd to me you know, just find me a mind who understands all the issues better than him. Okay, so uh, Buddhism, Taoism, Robert Bussey. So Robert Bussey, uh, he studied in Japan, and um, you know, with the with the regular grandmaster of ninjutsu. And then he, um, I haven't read the book yet, but he wrote a book where he had a change of heart. And he decided the roots of ninjutsu were too tied up with all this Buddhism. I think specifically uh, Shingon Buddhism is like uh, the secret school of Buddhism. The real, the real weird stuff, if you will. It was always my favorite school when I was studying. You know, they have the, the, the five schools of Buddhism. There's the, the secret school. It's all the kind of mantras, visualizations. Then they have the, the Vinaya. And that's, uh, that's basically like the equivalent of our halacha. It's the, it's the legal school. All the Buddhist laws and how they apply to everything. Really extensive. And then uh, dhyana, or zen, or chan in Chinese. That's the school of meditation. If you, if you, if you practice chan, you either become enlightened, or you become a devil, or you go crazy. <laughs> if you do it for real. Okay, so secret, uh, Vinaya, the light legal school, um, the uh, 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 Dhyana, the meditation school, uh, pure land, that's just chanting all day, like we were talking before about chanting these mantras, and um, I mean to chant is like a great thing. Here, here in Israel we have a, <laughs> we have a new sacred mantra, Nanach, Nachman, Nachman, Neuman. I'm only half kidding. To, to say the names of different uh, great holy people is a real practice. And um, Rebbe Nachman said someone should write a book that's just the names of all the holy people. And then Rebbe Natan, his main student, wrote a book of the names of every holy person in, uh, in all of Jewish history. And uh, I have it at my house if you want to see it. And uh, people chant it just like they would... Uh, something else and somehow this is very controversial to some people in the Torah world which seems ridiculous to me but uh, what do I know so, so to just chant the names of holy people 
Bar Yohai, dun na 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 na. That's a song about Shimon Bar Yohai. Yo na 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 me uman na 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 uman. That's that's the name of Rabbi Nachman, who's from a town called Uman in the Ukraine, Ukraine. And um, so that's another school of Buddhism, just to chant. And then there's another school. Which I'm forgetting here. Uh, give me a second when my brain defogs. Um, studying, studying the the sutra school. You know, so the Buddha had a bunch of teachings, and then um, and then people study the teachings all day. And um, you know, extremely deep teachings, a huge a huge uh, series of writings. In Buddhism, they say that every other religion in the world was really just created by the Buddha, and then the Buddha is going to teach Buddhism through those religions, or is teaching it through those religions. So I used to believe that about Torah too, and then uh, I studied enough Torah, and uh, I don't believe it anymore. I, I actually first got connected to Torah because I was in this Chinese Buddhist monastery, and uh, the monks, the monks were teaching the. Vinaya, the, the Buddhist law, and he made one comment about it's just like in Jewish law how you'll you'll make a fence around the law. There'll be a law like not to keep Shabbat, I mean, not to break Shabbat, and uh, and so in order not to break Shabbat, you'll be extra safe, um, you know, to uh, leave all the lights on before Shabbat, so you don't forget and turn the light on during Shabbat. Something. So I heard this one phrase about how good it is to, to put a fence around the law and, and like a light bulb went off in my house in my head I said wow like that's really interesting so uh, yeah so come with me on this big journey where we're 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 uh, we're taking the best out of all these world traditions and we're we're practicing a pure version of them that is that is uh, that's holy in the eyes of the some of the greatest uh, living holy people in Israel, and they and they look at this stuff through the lens of the greatest Jewish holy people of all time. And it's said in, in uh, the beginning of Bereshis Genesis, the book of Genesis. It said that uh, that that. Abraham Avinu sent his sons to the east bearing gifts and that those uh, those gifts his sent his sons with uh, were were the were the names of all these different mantras that are in all these spiritual traditions why would he send them to the east it's a whole story uh, we can get into it it's complicated but I'm basically just saying that story to say that apparently all these paths came from our original root. And if you don't believe me, just go once to uh, the Machpela, the, the, the burial place of uh, Avraham and Sarah and Yitzchak, etc. In, in Hebron. And uh, you'll feel the energy, unless you're like some kind of uh, boorish person. You'll feel the most incredible, like, primal life energy. And that's because uh, there's something going on here that's very mysterious and uh, it seems like all these mystical world traditions grew out of this root. Who cares about trying to prove it? Not me so much. Let's just, uh, let's just practice. Let's just practice and uh, see for ourselves as they say. Alright, uh, feel free to call me at any, any hour and uh, some more interesting classes has been coming my way, so talk to me. Bye.